Let me explain the principal scheme of the most mature way of managing property rights on blockchain. My name is Oleksii Konosevich and I am continuing the set of videos devoted to the concept of blockchain estate registry on the Blockchain State YouTube channel. In one of the previous videos I explained why a custodial model is not sustainable in the long run. Also, I explained the concept of jurisdictions on blockchain to ensure legal governance, including resetting the whole system or redesigning rules, but not losing a single transaction. I also explained why the concern about the immutability of records is false. Many people are worried that post-factum changes cannot be done in the history of blockchain transactions. I showed that there is no need to wipe out or change anything retroactively and presented a high-level concept of the proper design of the registry system. And in this video I explain the basics of designing blockchain applications including the ways records such as title tokens are created, transferred, updated, invalidated and so on. If you didn't watch it, I suggest you watch it first, otherwise just accept the fact that with the proper design of the system updates and changes on the blockchain are possible. If you saw that video, you will have the full picture. The video is not too technical, on the contrary, I tried to explain it in simple terms. So you will find all the mentioned uh, links to the videos in the description down below. Ok, the introduction is done, now let's get to the bottom of managing property rights on blockchain. The core element of the registry system is a title token. It is the record that represents the property rights, the ownership. The user conveys the property by its transfer from one address to another. But what if the private key becomes inaccessible, lost, stolen or owner dies? Or what if the title needs some legal update? I will get to it a little bit later. There is another token to address this. The record that I called uh, a certificate token. The properly designed title token refers to the certificate token, which doesn't represent the ownership, but only its legal status. This record validates the title token. The certification records are managed by a public body responsible for the registry, such as a land registry office. So, when any user on the blockchain finds a title token, it contains the reference to the certificate token, which states if this title is valid or not. The registrar cannot take anyone's title token and transfer it to a new legitimate owner. But an official can update the certificate record on their end. For example, they can change the status from valid to invalid or stolen or disputed. If, for example, the court states that the title belongs to another proprietor, the official makes a new record with reference to a new token. If the owner transfers the title token to a new owner, there is no need to make any changes to the certificate record. The blockchain is designed in such a way that uh, after the transfer, the title token still refers to the same certificate record. However, in such cases when the government or any other official body grants permission for a transaction, the system can be designed in the way that parties of the transaction, say the buyer and the seller, will need to get the authorization of the deal, otherwise such a peer-to-peer -peer transaction will not become valid. Nevertheless, I will not argue is it right or wrong when the government uh, or government agency authorizes property transactions. There are some countries where registries are maintained 
not as a way to protect the rights, but as a way to deprive rights and freedoms and dictate to the citizens what they can do or can't. Unfortunately, blockchain doesn't change the system and principles of governance. People change. Nevertheless, there can be some cases when such an authorization is reasonable, say, if it is public property and the law says it cannot be sold without the consent of the community or without an assessment of the property or without a tender or an auction. So the public servant that manages the public property will not be able to easily abuse his power and corrupt the system. The method of references in blockchain is also used for various routine procedures, such as splitting the land into two or more new parcels. So the certificate will state addresses to new titles, each of which will have their own new certificates. Who owns what? Besides the system of references, it is needed to specify the property. Title tokens show who owns the title by being attached to someone's address. But we also need uh, the what component in the equation of who owns what. And as we don't want to store much information on blockchain, uh, the title record can contain the reference to a survey. The survey is a technical file that contains some geographical positions, uh, some data, technical data, cadastral data, planning data, the, the quality of soil, and, and so on. The title token in simple design can contain just a hash sum of such data. So when it is presented, say, to a potential buyer, they can check if it is authentic and valid. I suppose that the IPFS technology would suit here better, as the hash sum validates the data and at the same time plays the role of the address where such data is stored. Another thing, I suggest that the title record should contain some on-chain data, some data that describes the property, the basic information such as the list of geographical points, and other data is just referenced and stored off-chain in order not to clutter the blockchain with uncritical data. When, for example, the parcel is split into two new parcels, the certificate will lead us to two new title records. Besides reference to new certificates, the title records will also contain new geographical points and references to new survey data. The advantage of this system is that the accuracy of the split can be verified algorithmically, as two new title records must inherit their source title and be within the border of its original source parcel. So the one who makes the record of split will not be able to misappropriate adjacent property. The system will not let input improper geographical points. The system of references is also crucial for various permits that public bodies grant for the property and uh, provide relevant public services. So if you need a building permit, you apply for it and the official creates a new permit token that certifies the obtained authorization. When it is issued on blockchain, the owner makes an update transaction to their title token, adding the reference to this permit token. The public body can revoke their certificates by updating the authorization records on their end. If the owner, by updating the title record, deletes the permit that was revoked, he will not be able to hide that he was deprived by the authorization. Why? The blockchain is immutable. The previous version of the record still contains the reference to the public record that states that the permit was revoked. So there is no way to fool around the public administration and the judicial system. When a building is lawfully erected, the owner makes a record 
referring to the official who certifies the completion of the construction. If the building is multi-unit, the property owner can create strata tokens, which can be sold after the proper certification. Other permits and records can be attached to the title, such as mining permits. The owner of the land that conducts uh, geological uh, exploration can attach reports of findings in the land. This information costs a lot and the attached reference to the findings will be transferred to the new owner, so the new proprietor of the land will get the authentic and accurate data about the found minerals. As you see, this system has a vast application, perhaps in all possible use cases that you can imagine. The advantages are obvious. You can have accurate, authentic and valid data about the property, starting with all attached rights, caveats, encumbrances such as mortgages, permits, planning data and other cadastral data. Without all this, it's just a piece of land with no knowledge about its value and hence not marketable. Blockchain protects this data like no other technology. Let me repeat this important thought. No other technology, not centralized database, not permissioned or private DLT, can ensure such a level of protection of the data as the blockchain can, being truly immutable. Here also comes transparency and accountability for all stakeholders of the property. The system becomes more effective as Fewer intermediaries are needed to be involved, such as parties can commit peer-to-peer -peer transactions, selling and buying the property at the click of a finger, or they can design complicated smart contracts involving many counterparties whose actions are automatically controlled and verified by algorithms of the smart contract. I didn't touch in this video examples with fractional ownership when the title is represented not by one non-fungible token, but by multiple tokens. In this case, the relationships between multiple co-owners can be designed within the smart contract. For example, they can vote and make collective decisions towards their property. There are some aspects of legal governance of fractional ownership, but we'll get to it another time. Meanwhile, that's it. Please hit like and subscribe if you liked this video. Thank you and see you in the next video.